Hi, everyone. Uh, we're so glad to be here uh, and in such a nice conference. And as uh, Star said, we are Paul and Spiros from OpenCRI. Um, our presentation is titled The One Standard to Unify Them All. You may have an idea what it is about. Uh, it's about standard unification if you didn't get it. So pleased to meet you. Paula, want to start? Sure. Uh, my name is Paula Garcia. I am a senior staff cybersecurity engineer at Big Soul Solutions, Inc. Uh, we are headquartered in Washington, D.C. Uh, we are an organization uh, that partners with the U.S. federal governments and um, agencies to actually work on in technical solutions. Um, so, yeah, Spiros. Awesome. Uh, my name is Spiros Gasteratos. I, um, I've been a NOWASP member uh, for over 15 years. I was a student and much younger back then. Um, I, um, my professional life, I uh, run a small um, security company. We make security tools. It's called Smithy, uh, as in blacksmith. Um, <laughs> I write open source software, volunteer in NOWASP, uh, maintain OpenCRI my free time. Uh, that's about it. Active OWASP. Was... Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I forget. <laughs> Uh, but this presentation is not about us, it's about what we made, um, and it's about you. So this session is collaborative. We have a lot to go through, uh, so let's make it a bit uh, less sleep-inducing. So hands up, who knows what OpenCR is? Wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, who has used it before? Nice. Okay, okay. We'll have some users in the room. Um, and who has seen OpenCRI presentations before? Okay, Rob doesn't count because he delivered them. <laughs> uh, so if everyone had, we could keep slides, but uh, we, that doesn't make sense. Uh, so let's start from the beginning. A long, long time ago in uh, a chat room uh, far away. Um, we found a problem. Referring to security standards is essential. Every time you need to write uh, internal security documentation or any sort of security advice, you need to say, uh, it's good to say where you got this idea from, where you got this advice from. Uh, say, so say you say you write something about XML security, at the bottom you usually add some references to a was top 10, uh, CWE, or some other standard. But there is a big problem. Finding uh, relevant security information today is a struggle. This is a study by the European Cybersecurity Organization, EXO, uh, was done in 2019. It is a list of security standards out there. There is a small problem. This list is more than 200 pages. There is no reason for any list to be more than 200 pages, let alone a list of security information that you need to follow. Um, so this proves, at least in my opinion, that uh, the guidelines uh, landscape is both bulky and fragmented, and it's not user-friendly or meant for humans. And that makes the problem that uh, referring to standards is fundamentally broken. If we go back to our example, you try to create an XML, sec XML security advice, um, and then you try to find which top 10 to link to, uh, but the people who read your advice have no idea what top 10 AO5 means, uh, because they're probably developers, and they've heard about the watch top 10, they don't know it by heart. Uh, CWU 611 uh, is the same, and then standards change, so links break, uh, you don't have the time to maintain all your mappings yourself, so you link to old versions, uh, or in general, you have no idea what is out there. It's not your job to know everything that is out there. So you end up with incomplete advice and great resources missing. Uh, the result, at least what I did, and I think, Paula, what you did, is that you start copy-pasting things. Uh, it is very common in our field. You go to a WASP, Stack Overflow, copy the uh, most relevant bit, paste it into your uh, advice, and hope that it is correct. Um, problem is, 
we're not experts in everything, right? We are experts in some things and we understand some other things uh, less. Um, so perhaps you're not super familiar with um, XML security requirements of a specific library or of a very specific attack. So you get inconsistencies, uh, you get outdated things, maybe something is fixed, um, things are complete, and in general, you create more bulk, more fragmentation. You add to those the 200 pages of standards that we saw. Enter OpenCRE. Uh, so a while ago, we got very frustrated with uh, Rob over here, and uh, we saw the, those darn standards writers, they don't link uh, to normal things. So what do we need? We need um, one standard to rule them all, one to bind them, and we created OpenCRE. OpenCRE now allows you to link to one page, one standard, and then have everything else you could be linking to as uh, children of that page. So right now, if you write about XML security, you can um, provide the link to the CRE uh, 764507, restrict XML parsing against XXE, and then you get for free ASVS, which is what to check. You get for free uh, WSTG, a Web Security Testing Guide, so for your testers, how to test for it. Um, cheat sheets, so how to deserialize for coders. Uh, cheat sheets, how to prevent XXE for coders. Top 10 entries, rules for Dust, and the corresponding KPEG thread, so you can communicate with everybody in this chain. Which brings us to the topic of today, no more mappings. For <laughs> <laughs> manual mappings. Uh-huh. Well. So that's the use case I'll be talking about. Um, all right. So um, who here uh, are anyone here that's a developer? Developer. Great. Testers? Um, security managers? Or you oversee security one way or the other? Great. So OpenCRE is for every one of you. Um, and uh, I'll move to the next slide. Um, so yeah, what is OpenCRE? Um, Spiros talked to you a little bit about how we are kind of like putting everything in one place. Uh, but that's what it is. Think about it as, for the developers out there, think about it as a repository. Um, think about it as a catalog of information. Uh, so my use case, and um, before I even jump into like the exact word by word, but what it is is, um, we were actually, as security professionals, looking for information. Um, we will go and search online. Sometimes if you don't know a standard or, you, or you're actually working with a particular security control, you want to understand the control, you want to read about it, and then go and, and write the implementation detail. What happens is it's there's a ton of information out there, as you know, and it's really hard to put everything all together. Um, so I actually stumbled upon OpenCRE. The two masterminds behind it, it's uh, Spiros right here and Rob. Um, but I, I stumbled upon it and it really, like, it really clicked. Like, there was like this moment where you see this light bulb and you're like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I was looking for. It is that one repository where you find pretty much all of the information. So if you're looking for, um, NIST 853 controls, we, like I was mentioning before, I work with government organizations in the US. Um, that's very big on NIST 853. I'm working now with the ISO 27001 controls. Everything is all there. And the mappings are within the website. So if you go to opencre.org, you can find um, all of that information. We'll do a little bit of a demo in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, this was integrated into OWASP about two years ago. There's a lot of work for the last four years that they have been putting in. Um, I jumped in and started to help out and just, uh, we've been actually working through it. There has been collaborations with uh, OWASP Top 10, ASVS, SKF, OSSF and CSA now. Um, so if you go into the website, you will see that CRE is an interactive database. Uh, it's smart access to security standards and guidelines when you're actually designing, developing, auditing, testing, and even procuring cybersecurity. Um, it links pretty much, uh, it unlocks pretty much all of the information resources into this one <coughs> unified overview and allows easy referencing, searching, browsing and even asking questions. And that's a little feature we'll show you about um, the OpenCRE chatbot that we have. So uh, yeah, there are mappings there. Like like I was mentioning before, tons of mappings, but some of the main ones that uh, at least I find helpful and other people find helpful as well, the ISO 27000, ASVS, the always top 10. Uh, you have NIST 800, 863 and 853. 
And um, any other proactive controls, you'll find cheat sheets. So again, if you are a developer, a manager, or a tester, pretty much you come to OpenCRE, you find that CRE ID, and that pretty much links you to all the information, cheat sheets, standards, and any guidelines that you need when you're reviewing code, when you're testing code, when you're writing uh, security control imp implementations. Live demo. We love those, right? Um, so yeah, I'll jump in here, and I'll show you. This was kind of like what I did. Again, you will go and do a little bit of like Googling and um, don't know how we will show this, but let me see if I can move this over. So we have, um, so let's say you stumble upon a website, you're actually looking for information on um, this, in, in this case, it's, um, if you come up here, I'm like in GitHub, and then I come up and like find wrong secrets. So information about wrong secrets. Um, you can see that there's the entire repository. Um, always wrong secrets, what it is. And then at the bottom here, and I don't want to get you guys dizzy, so I'll bring it up quickly. You'll see the link to OpenCRE. So we'll open that, and here's what you end up um, coming up with. Um, again, wrong secrets, and then you were linking to this one common um, not name, which is secret storage, and then uh, you can see down here the CRE ID. And um, you can see that there's like links, the link to OpenCRE. There are all other standards right here. Um, if we keep coming down, you will end up seeing even more information and other, um, other OpenCREs that are actually related to this one particular um, secrets and um, secret storage and wrong secrets where we originally started with. And if you look down somewhere here, you will find that uh, the cheat sheet that I was talking about, and um, you can also see these links back to this uh, GitHub page as well. Back to our presentation, right? Awesome. Um, here we go. Thank you. So how did we arrive here? This is a semantic web of cybersecurity information. It didn't happen overnight. Um, we started with uh, something easy. Let's link every standard to every other standard. We started doing that, and by three standards, we realized this is an exponential mapping, which uh, doesn't work very well, um, because this is unmaintainable. You end up with a spaghetti, and spaghetti is delicious, but you cannot work with it. Um, so we solved that by creating series, uh, common IDs uh, that describe a cybersecurity concept, something like XML security or XXE, and link everything to an internal um, an internal uh, concept. And instead of spaghetti, you end up with a graph. We like graphs. Graphs we can work with. And uh, this is an example. You have KPEX, CWE, testing guide, uh, and cheat sheets that all describe the same thing, XML security. So you end up linking them to uh, the relevanciary uh, title restrict XML parser, which makes sense. And don't take my word for it. And NISA, European uh, Cybersecurity Organization, has uh, said in caps in their um, advancing software security in the EU paper, that we need a common repository for shared security measures. Well, here it is. Use it, CRE, um, et cetera, et cetera. Which brings me to the second problem. Once we mapped everything to common requirements and we created this graph format, users started complaining that it is very, very hard to map new things. So if you ha we have now over 600 CREs, um, Finding a needle in a haystack, it's quite hard. So, and not every standard describes a problem the same in the same depth. Some cheat sheets are very, very precise about specific uh, cross-site scripting, but NIST, for example, has whole sections on cryptography. How do you describe cryptography without linking to like 300 CRH? So, we came up with this idea of uh, higher level topics. You can have a standard that link to a high le higher level topic. For example, secret storage is a very good one. And under secret storage, you have cryptography, you have cryptographic file storage, you have secure access, et cetera, et cetera, which you can um, 
and then you can have a tree structure to choose from. And this is how it currently looks like. You get uh, the same uh, the same resources are a strict XML parsing, but then also you have MIST uh, 53 that links to input and output protection, which is uh, a superset of restrict XML parsing. This creates the graph that you can see on the left or on our t-shirts here, um, and it looks pretty cool, and um, creates this graph of information that is visually a bit more pleasing than spaghetti, but also it is... Um, it allows you to work with it. And we'll show you how we work with it in a second, um, which leads us, uh, leads us to our third problem. Standards change, so links break, right? How many times have you clicked on a document link and then you end up in a 404 page because uh, things broke? We solve this by trying to abandon mappings. We try and convince standards writers to link back to us and then we can be, we can take a Google model where we can detect links back to us and write parsers and generate those links and populate our databases uh, dynamic. Um, testing guide has done that. Uh, ASVS has done that. Sam has done that. Um, Wrong Secrets has done that. We just talked about that. Um, and there is more and more uh, standards uh, writers and resources writers who do this every day. And which brings us to another problem. We have all the information and we have links to all the information, but humans do not are not machines. They do not need to just click, traverse a graph and hope that they figure it out. They need a human relate, a human friendly way of accessing the information we store in OpenCRE. So a year ago, we created OpenCRE chat, because AI, everybody has a chatbot. Why not create the first cybersecurity chatbot? Um, which is a very nice way of describing information on OpenCRE. Paula, would you like to demo? Sure. <coughs> I love demo time. Um, so yeah, with, when you think about all this information and the repository that we have, um, we can actually start saying, like, uh, we can start thinking about ways to uh, make it easier for us humans to search for it. And yes, that's where we come up with the chatbot. So let me do it. Do you want me to do it in staging? Uh, no, just do it for protection. It's fine. Demos and protection. What can go wrong? Yeah. So you'll come up here. Um, at the top, you'll see the open theory chat. And um, the question we want to ask was, um, how can we prevent XML injections? And um, we'll hit send. And um, so behind the scenes, uh, what you're seeing right now is pretty much all of the information from OpenCRE, all of the standards, cheat sheets, and all of that that we've grabbed from the catalogs that you saw and, and the links. And the chatbot will ask, uh, after you ask the question from the user, the assistant will, will have the answer. And let me see, I can zoom in there a little bit. And right there, you can see uh, the answer. So the safest way is to prevent. You'll get that little bit of a response. And then um, at the bottom, something that is pretty unique, I think, for OpenCRE is you get the references back to like all the information and data that we already have within our OpenCRE catalog and database. Uh, so you get a cheat sheet, um, and you also get prevention cheat sheet, and you also get finding more information about this, and you can open and go and open the page, and you'll end up with all of the standards um, that are related to that particular CRE. So that was the demo, and we'll go back to the presentation if we find it here. Let's see what's here. There you go. Awesome. So uh, two words on how CRE chat works. It's uh, basic uh, retrieval augmentation. Uh, a lot of people think uh, say that this is hard. Uh, it's really not very hard. Um, you ask a question. We use natural language processing and embeddings to find the nearest uh, document on our knowledge graph. So what is the nearest CRE or standard? Um, we then take the text or the resources from uh, that document, uh, ship it to an LLM uh, with a prompt of pretty much 
here's some text, explain the text for humans, um, and the LLM, and based on this question, uh, the LLM does its magic. Uh, it is much harder to hallucinate because the prompt is much simpler. It doesn't have to generate anything. It just has to summarize something. And once the LLM answers, we present the answer, uh, uh, presenting it nicely with, uh, if it has any code, we present the code in a nice way so that you don't have to, uh, we don't have broken information. Uh, but it doesn't stop there. We have a graph. If we have a graph and we have all this information, why not do a um, map analysis exercise where we map, uh, we show you how things uh, relate to one another. Uh, you press that? Ah, oh, awesome. So, map analysis is something we released um, last year, six months ago, something like that. <laughs> and it allows you to see how things stuck with one another. This is a very useful use case. Uh, Eden uh, back there was uh, describing it uh, as is a very big user of uh, this particular use case. Say you implement ASVS. You have structured all your AppSec program around ASVS, which thank you for doing this, great. You probably have a nice time. But now suddenly you need to uh, follow Let's find the standard. Ah. You need to follow ISO. So the question comes, what is I'm currently doing and how does it stack with what the standard requires me to do? Well, here it is. Gap analysis taking, what, a second? Instead oh, of, <laughs> well, instead of uh, hours or weeks that would normally take you if you did it with an auditor, um, et cetera, et cetera. Now imagine if it's not ASBS and it's your internal cybersecurity information and processes. Gov analysis done. I want to demo explorer? Um, yep. Yeah. We'll two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Cool. Okay. So I'll we'll jump on the minutes. explorer again, but um, I, the map analysis feature, um, you have it, and then if we come up here, oh, this one is not staging, so let me go to explorer. Um, um, at the top on the far right, you'll get the Explorer where um, you actually get that catalog I was talking about a little bit and like you get it in more detail where all of the CREs are actually expanded and um, you can see how they're linked to each other and even the standards that are related to the particular um, CRE ID. So um, if you go down again, you'll just see like, um, it's like a tree and you can see how they are all interconnect to each other. Um, from the top all the way down to the child um, as he are is. So, um, yeah, that one's nice and quick. Uh, as a bonus, if you want to absolutely wreck your browser uh, window <laughs> or impress your colleagues, we had fun with graphs and created um, the visualization. Um, this is a strong connected graph of all the shared information. Uh, it is an experimental feature, so we're improving it, but uh, it's a fun thing I like to show. Um, now, to this is not a demo anymore because we have a minute. Um, new things that have come up, we are publishing now containers. You can run the whole website, the whole application with data internally. Um, the containers are on as packages on our GitHub page. Um, Docker run minus be the port is 5,000. Um, it will do this everything by itself, even synchronized with upstream, which is uh, something pretty cool. Uh, so you just give it a few minutes to run until it synchronizes. Uh, and next steps coming soon, or as they say in Portugal, em breve, at least that's what Google Translate says. Um, we are expanding on the allowing you to run OpenCRE. Uh, I'm gonna let Paula describe this because that's her use case. Um, yeah, so this was a, a really great use case because when I came to OpenCRE, I found all the resources in one place. Um, but there's also the, that one time where perhaps you want to run this locally because you'll have private information that only belongs to your particular organization. So this is where, where my OpenCRE actually comes in. Um, you can actually like deploy this locally and run uh, this for like resources for your engineers. Uh, think about it if you have to have maybe your own wiki page for the engineers. Um, in these cases, we're also writing some guidelines, um, best practices, et cetera, so you can use 
um, everything locally and be, you know, be able to not have that private information out in the public. Um, again, you can search, browse, you can do map analysis, uh, against certain, you know, whatever you have against the ISO 27000. Um, you can use large language models like we were talking about. You can use that chatbot, um, internally, um, generating the security and IT knowledge. Um, and again, you'll end up like with your local repository and, um, being able to run your own, um, gap analysis. Uh, this is a feature coming soon. Uh, we, we will release information on how to add, uh, your own custom standards into OpenCRI. And then suddenly, no matter who you are, no matter what you do, you have, uh, a portal, uh, an easy to connect portal to the outside world. Um, and this is contribute to your own mappings, which we said. Um, so wrapping up, why OpenCRI? Well, you democratize cybersecurity, right? You enable everybody to talk the same language. Um, a vendor who uses us uh, outside just described us as uh, cybersecurity Rosetta Stone, right? <laughs> uh, which sounds pretty cool. Uh, essentially, link all the things. Um, and here's what we need from you. Uh, pretty much use it, uh, you benefit. And uh, if you use it, uh, shout from the rooftops that you are a user, um, so we can hear. And um, uh, you benefit, you don't need to write everything yourself. Um, it makes it easy for your users and your developers to find the right information. Again, even has a chatbot, completely free, completely open source and open data. Uh, your links will never break uh, because we maintain them. And generally, you don't have to do mappings anymore. We take care of um, A big thank you to contributors. Rob van der Veer is uh, one of the original masterminds and uh, has created most of the graph. Um, Diana Liheva uh, helps with the front end. Uh, Aiden Gardeni, uh, big user and feedback. Uh, Sylvan Martijn, Elisad, uh, created original mappings, and several uh, companies and governments who use OpenCRI uh, to make their lives easier. Some of them are here. Um, that's it. Thank you. I think we can leave that slide. We can leave that slide. Any questions? Or, uh. Yeah. Uh, the question was, who's maintaining the database? Uh, the answer is us. It's the community. How can it join your help? Uh, you can find us on Slack or Wasp Slack. It's Project OpenCRE. And uh, we're also on GitHub uh, or Wasp slash OpenCRE. Uh, uh, yeah, right up here you'll see the contribution, um, the GitHub links, and uh, just reach out. We want to hear from you. We want to know what use cases you have and how we can help you solve your problems. Also, if I understood uh, well, because about the database, uh, it's something uh, that you can contribute the sources you want to use, right? Like, uh, because you said before that with my open CRE, that you, you decide to have the mappings. So I, I could decide what has in the database or in the one end of the mapping. Like, instead of having all these, I could uh, have specific... Uh, your own mappings? Or I'm wrong. You understand what I'm trying to say? So, like, what what you're what you're saying is, if you let's say we'll have like our own database, but then you can it's always accessible for everybody, and then you can add your own mappings to it. Yes. Your own information. All the mappings could be, let's say, somehow autom automatically uh, fixed or you decide what it would be. But instead of having, uh, let's say, ISO or all the other things that uh, which could be as a database on one hand, uh, I can put my own. Uh, you can con data. yes, you can contribute your own data. This is what my OpenCRI is aims to do. Uh, it's coming soon, uh, maybe this quarter or uh, early next quarter, and um, yeah, you we will make an announcement about it. It's the next cool thing. <laughs> So the question was, uh, how is a typical use case uh, from developers? Um, I'll tell you how I used it uh, with my developers. Um, we had uh, a bunch of uh, SAST 
tools that had, uh, we used Zap. And Zap would create some uh, findings. Instead of telling developers that, hey, here's a Zap finding, go figure out what it means and go figure out what's the, the terms, we would map, we would use CRE to find what CRE, uh, the Zap finding maps to, the Zap rule maps to, and then, um, bring out the relevant cheat sheets or bring out the relevant developer friendly information. Yes. Linking back to like all the other information. So if I'm a developer and I'm writing the, a little piece of like code and I want it to be secure for that particular XML injection, I would come to the CRE ID. Um, I'll look at all of the data in there. And for example, if as a developer, I usually will go to like OS top 10. And then sometimes you can get that piece of code. As an example, right from the CRE ID, I can just find it because it's linked to it. And I also can find other information related to that. And if I'm a developer, I can also tell all of my compliance folks, hey, listen, we updated this information. You'll need to update uh, the security controls for the NISD 153 or for this one in uh, ISO 27000. So it kind of like helps you even understand if as a developer how to write clean code um, and also go back to your team and, and make sure that you're telling them where you're changing that information and what should um, be updated. Uh, there are some OpenCRE shiny stickers on the table. Uh, if you need any more information, we'll be around the conference. I'm, I'm also going to be leaving some other um, swag things there. So yeah, awesome. feel free to uh, grab it. Thank you. Thank you.